every Friday, courtesy of our friends at the Dairy Queens of Northwest Edmonton and Sherwood Park. I'm talking Palisades, Nemeo, Newcastle, Westmount, Baseline Road. We give you a chance to blow off a little steam, to bring the heat. This is a chance to say what needs to be said, and we're asking you to bring us your hot takes, and you do through the week. These are the emails that we've received to talk at ryanjesperson.com, like this one from Gerald. This arrived just yesterday after I talked to Andrew McDougall, uh, former director of communications for Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Great interview. If you missed it, check it out. Uh, that was our... Uh, What's the date today? Today is January 5th, right? So that was our January 4th episode with McDougal. Gerald says, uh, listening to your pod, oh, pardon me, he's talking about Sean Canungo, says, I'm a little bit perturbed. He says, I hear this all the time, but it's always spoken about in these vague musings. People are afraid to speak their mind. Nobody wants to say what they really mean. They're worried about the blowback. He says, on what? He says, Ryan, you brought up one topic, trans athletes in sport. Okay, he goes, that's one. He goes, he goes give me five other topics that people tread lightly on. Honestly, uh, Israel, Gaza, abortion. I mean, he says, oh, you know, we got think pieces on Gaza. We've had marches for parental rights. So what are people really afraid to talk about? Now, there is an issue of nuance. Is there an issue or are people giving grace to learn on certain topics? I don't see people giving grace for people to learn on topics anywhere, Gerald, to be honest with you. He says, but if no one will be specific, no one will take on the nuance. Maybe we should all stop belly aching. He says, I would like to hear you give us a list of five things people fear talking about and then do shows on them. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. He says, the problem is, and I don't think for a second that this is the case with Sean, but when people are super vague and say, you just can't speak your mind like you used to, it kind of sounds like I'm not allowed to say offensive things anymore. I miss being able to be a jerk and treat people poorly. So let's not be vague. That's from Gerald. Gerald, the beautiful irony of your email is that somebody talking about feeling like they can't talk about things is being ripped by you. Isn't that inherently a... Anyway, I digress. Thank you for your email. This from Stephen, who says, Hey, your listener, Garth, Yeah, basically they said this week that until a town of 5,000 people can completely run on renewables, we need to forget even talking about the idea, talk about greening the grid. He says, maybe let listener Garth know that Las Vegas, its city facilities, are now operating on 100% renewable energy. I was like, what? And so Stephen goes on to say they launched a 100 megawatt solar farm. He says, people can Google Boulder Solar One. The city was able to purchase enough green energy to power all of its 140 buildings, streetlights, parks, and other facilities. He goes, obviously, it's not enough power to power the hotels and the slot machines, but it's definitely a step in the right direction and a notable achievement. Let's not pretend, says Stephen, that progress is impossible or something that can only be achieved by 2050. Not from Stephen. That's a great email. And how about this one from Cam, who says, I wanted to respond to Garth, who wrote in talking about how environmentally friendly Canadian oil and gas is, but let's discuss how we're impacting where we eat and live. We have yet to allow water to be safely released from any of the oil sand sites. How can we claim environmental friendliness with a $300 billion liability with no secured funds while oil companies take their profits back to shareholders? He says, if oil and gas really was the way to go, why don't companies invest in more mines, more infrastructure? Companies are prioritizing extracting maximum value from existing assets as opposed to to expanding them. Now we need to use our current laws and tax dollars to transition the oil sands beyond combustion, electrify, and strengthen our electrical grid for renewable investment. He says, forget about this moratorium from a libertarian. Let's ensure that Alberta continues to lead the world, lead the nation in innovation. That is the real Alberta spirit, the real Alberta way. So says Cameron signing off, hey Garth, wake up and pull your head out of the exhaust pipe. I like that one. We'll end there. The Flamethrower is proudly presented by the DQs of Northwest Edmonton and Sherwood Park. When you're there, you let them know Real Talk sent you. Coming up next week, we're going to check in with Charles Adler and Sapria DeVetti's coming back for a chat early in 2024. We can't wait. Have a wonderful and safe weekend, everybody. One love. Thanks for supporting Real Talk.